so much for joining me for this collaboration. Today we are talking about an evening look featuring top shelf items. So if you'd like to see that, please keep watching. If you are returning, thanks again for joining us. And if you are new from Angela's channel, thank you for joining us as well. So if you don't know Angela, she is based in Italy. She has very classic features. I call her a classic beauty. She's got beautiful blue eyes, fair skin, dark hair, and she is very informative in her luxury beauty reviews. So if you've not already seen her, she's the reason why I purchased many of the items I have. Most recently, the Sisley in the Silky Coral that eyeshadow that they came out with recently. It looked so gorgeous on her, I had to pick it up. And I'm glad I did because it is just as beautiful as she described. So if you want honest reviews on Luxury Beauty and you have not already headed over to see her. She has a lot of Chanel as well, which is one of the things I don't have a whole lot of. So she does feature a lot of things that are different than what I have. She's also one of those people who works full time but also does YouTube on the days that she has off and her posting schedule is quite impressive knowing that she has that full time job. So I know it's a lot of work to get videos out anyway. So when you have only a couple days a week to do it, it's even harder. So. I really appreciate that about her. One of the other reasons I call her classic beauty is because her makeup application is classic. So depending on what she's wearing, it doesn't matter if it's a trendy product or not, she's going to apply it so it looks tasteful and always classic. So I really like that about her. So if you have not already seen her, please make sure you go over and see her video. I'm really curious about her evening look. Another thing is that we both wear makeup that's kind of like what you would wear every day and we rarely feature evening looks because I don't know about her, but I don't go out in the evening that often, so I don't have a need to wear it. <laughs> so it was a nice idea though. I really liked how, it was her idea actually to do an evening look because I was able to look at my top shelf items, which if you haven't already seen that video, I take you on a tour of every item in my top shelf as well as swatch everything for you. So these are things that are things that I love, things I need to use more of or things I'm testing out. So this falls into the category of things I need to use more of. Um, I love like the Chantecaille colors that I put on, I love them, but I really don't wear them every day because I don't have anywhere to go that would, I don't know. I, you can wear whatever you want every day, I just don't wear them every day. But I wanted to maximize them and use them in an evening look, so that's what I did with this. So it was kind of fun to kind of shop my own, um, what they call it, shop your stash, that kind of thing. So using your own makeup to do something different with it. I think for evening looks, we think we have to go out and buy something new to make it special, but you can use what you already have. But if you wanna see how we got here, um, again, for an evening look, I like things to look like me still, but just a little bit more evening. <laughs> so if you wanna see from beginning to end, I'll show you application from no makeup to this, and you'll see kind of what I focused on and um, where I minimize makeup a little bit to get to this look. So I'll again take you step by step. It won't be in real time because it'd be a really long video, but you'll get to see every single Let's step. prep the skin first. I've already put moisturizer. I avoided anything with SPF except I have some chemical SPF in my moisturizer, but it's fine. I put a little bit of clay de peau oil on and then I'm going to use the Tatcha, the Silk Canvas primer. It's still, I'm going to say the best primer for making sure everything stays in place and it really makes this nice and smooth. And I'm not going to prime my whole face. I'm just priming parts of it, like right here, kind of where I get oily. I'm also going to prep with this. Usually I use the Color Science, um, the three-in-one eye, but that has SPF in it. So just the same thing as that Color Science three-in-one if you have that in terms of just color correcting slightly, you can see. So the eye products I'm gonna use have a little bit of shimmer, a little bit of like micro glitter, I'm gonna say, because I'm going to be applying it with water. There's not much fallout, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my face first. But this gives you a nice idea of where we are um, darkness-wise. I mean, we're really making some nice progress, so I feel like finally <laughs> we're making a difference. So again, going with the no SPF, I thought I'd use the Tom Ford Traceless Foundation Stick in 7 Tawny. And I'm gonna use a brush I haven't used in a long time. So I'm just gonna dot this on my face in the strategic area. What is this? <laughs> I'm gonna dot this in the strategic areas. I mean, look, you can see how quickly it covers up that darkness too. And then I'm gonna take this brush. I haven't used it in a long time because honestly, I love the finish on this. It's the Artiste Palm Brush, but it's just so hard to clean because they're so densely packed, but I thought to get a really nice, smooth application and something that looks skin-like, I thought this would be a really great brush to take out. 
worth the cleaning for this. So I'm kind of just patting here and then sweeping it out. Patting and sweeping out. I just want to keep that foundation in place right there, um, but then fade it out to the end. Yeah, I think it's really easy to go heavy handed on everything with evening, thinking that, um, that more makeup is gonna look more evening, I guess. But for me, I really wanna keep the skin looking as skin-like as possible and then really just brighten the eyes and then um, get a nice lip on. So really, that's, I think, as much foundation as we need. I want the skin to show through. I do need to conceal a little bit though, but I just wanted to fade out so you, there's barely any foundation on the edges here. So really just putting very, very little foundation, if any, on the areas where I don't need it and just to kind of fade it into the areas where I do, which is right here. Right now, it's looking pretty nice without concealer. So I have an essential here and something that is new to my top shelf. So I hope that's not like cheating too much. It wasn't in my top shelf video, but I've recently picked it up and it's quickly made it there. Um, but Aniko, thank you for convincing me I needed to try this. So it looks really light, but I've been playing with it. And I like the texture of it because it's, um, it's on the drier side. My Clay de Peau have some SPF in it, the concealers. Even though I don't have a problem with them, I'm gonna do this without SPF and that one doesn't have it. So just a little bit of color correcting here. Yeah, Aniko's talked about this one a few times and I thought, if she loves it this much, I need to give it a go. Okay, I think that's as far as we'll go with the concealing and color correcting right now. We're in pretty good shape. I know it looks a little light up here, um, but we'll figure that out in a little bit. Even though it's not perfect, like you can see a little bit right here, with the powders, it'll start to blur everything. So if you feel like you need to make this part perfect, I think, I mean, I always kind of let it go because eventually everything works itself out. So. Um, I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish 2, and I'm going to use this Deluxe Kabuki Brush, Ray Morris. It has a little bit of pigmentation on it, but I cleaned it with the brush cleaner. I think I'm using mostly Ray Morris brushes here today. I'm going to powder all over with the Hourglass Powder. Um, sorry, it's the Radiant Light Ambient Lighting Powder. Oh, I forgot to mention, I don't know if you noticed, I did not put foundation on my nose. I was reading an article, but it was talking about how not placing foundation on the nose makes it look more natural because the nose is always a tricky area to apply foundation. So unless you need foundation on your nose, it looks more natural to avoid foundation there, which I thought, oh, that makes a lot of sense because there are a bunch of pores and things like that, especially on the top that reflect the light. So I always had trouble right here on the end of my nose with just a visible makeup. So made sense to not put any there. I'm using the Ambient Lighting Edit Hourglass Ghost. I'm using Dim Light here just for the center part right here. Now one thing I've been doing is I've been adding blush here to kind of combat that darker area. So we'll do that in a little bit. So the only problem with these Ray Morris brushes, I love that they're magnetic, but they also stick to everything, <laughs> anything metallic. So I'm going in with my Guerlain Meteorites in medium right in the center of my face. Trying to get the lavender ones more towards the bottom, though I don't need as much of the lavender. Oh, did I show you that? In case you haven't seen this shade, here it is. I've got a number seven Kabuki brush, Sephora. So I'm just gonna apply it to the middle here. Again, more blurring. Seems like a lot of powder, but I feel like that's really where the bulk of my makeup comes into play is the powder. I'm also going to use this new one I have by Guerlain. It's the holiday one in Golden Land. So beautiful. This is one of those limited edition things that I think, yeah, pick this one up. So I'm just going to dust this around the perimeter of my face, almost like a bronzer. Same brush. Yeah, that's how I go in and fix anything in the end when I feel like it's not even enough in terms of um, complexion. Okay, so we're gonna stop right here just in terms of complexion, complexion, because what I find is that after a little while, my skin interacts with the products and it looks a little bit more skin-like and then I can tell if I need to add more of something to fix anything, but I think we're okay right now. So eyebrows, when I set them down at this point, kind of allow me to frame my eyes and see how much 
makeup I need to add or little. So we'll just fast forward through this. Dior Pump and Brow 002. Love this. If you want to make them a little fluffier, which I do, I'm going to back brush them. So kind of go against the grain to make them stand up and away from my face. That's going down a little bit too far. So I'm going to fix that with this. It's got a nice spooling out. It's the Dior Show Pencil 002 as well. And then let's go ahead and pencil in just a little bit. Now eyebrows are one of those things that I'm going to fix along the way depending on kind of how everything evolves. And then sometimes like the way my face relaxes, it might need a little bit of fixing because sometimes they look uneven. Let's go in with the eyes. I think this is the most fun part. So I'm going to start with this. I am loving this shade in here, Caramel in the Tweed Palette. I don't know what I'm showing you that, but it's Caramel in the Tweed Palette by Victoria Beckham. If you haven't seen that, I did a whole look, just a really natural look with this, but I'm loving this shade because I don't have anything like it. It's just a little bit deeper than my skin tone. So it's a really nice shadow color in terms of just giving some dimension to the eye area. So I'm taking this brush, I love this one. It's the number eight by Remorse. It's a pointed shader brush, I think it's what it's called. Uh, if that's not what it's called, I'll put what it is below, but it's like a fluffy brush, but it's got a tapered end. So you can strategically place, let me just shake that off a little bit. You can strategically place this in the socket and then just lay down that color. And it kind of, does the job for you in terms of blending it out. I think I put a little like pencil brush in there before and it was just too precise for this area and I didn't have this brush yet. So, and a fluffy brush is fluffy so you don't have as much um, exactness with where you place the color. I mean, it depends on what you're going for but in this case, I really want it in the crease here. Just running it back and forth. Like this is so easy to use. So if you're not good with this, like I have trouble and have had trouble for a long time with the crease area, just because of the shape of my eyes and they're not even in terms of the crease, like this comes out a lot further, this bone right here. So this has solved a lot of problems for me. So if you have trouble with this area, this is a great one. And then the next brush I'm going to use, this is not a Ray Morris commercial, but I just find that her brushes have such unusual shapes to them that are solutions to makeup issues that you might experience. So there it is. So you can blend that out with a fluffy brush. Now I just picked this brush up and I actually read how you're supposed to use it. I was kind of experimenting with it before I read the directions. So I think you can use this in different ways too, but the way they suggest is the 6.5. It's made for hooded eyes. So it has a very unique shape to it. And so I, was trying to see if they had a video. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to go like this and sweep it or this, I think probably either way, but I'm just going to take it here and what it does is it helps to blend this for hooded eyes. So once you place color in here, you can just blend it like this. Actually, let me just sweep it out here like this. It's the easiest thing ever. I've tried using as a windshield wiper. So what I find is sometimes I put a little bit too much here. So if I sweep it out, then I'm just dragging the color more towards an upward outward movement is, which is what I need. So quickly, I didn't even use a blending brush. I love this thing. There's a little bit of shimmer in this. So just know that now we get to go in with the fun part I have a little bit of water here. I'm going to take lion by Chantikai, another Ray Morris brush. I've got the, number 11 here. And it's a, I've been experimenting, so it's a little bit damp right now. I'm going to put it in here, and I know it's tragic to break this lovely pattern here, but I'm making more of a paste now, so you can see it on the brush. I'm going to pat on my eyelids. So you can see how lovely it is when it's on. Really beautiful. So with the evening, again, I feel like it can be easy to go darker on the eyes and just really heavy. And I actually tried that, but I was having a little bit of an issue balancing it out with the rest of my makeup. So I decided, let me try something that's intense, but lighter shaded, light, lighter colored. Um, and this I think is perfect because for evening, 
especially holiday, there'll probably be things like sparkling lights and candles and things like that. And I think wearing something like this really catches the light. Now I'm going to take my other Shantikai shade, okay, giraffe here. I'm also going to dampen my brush. I'm going to run that under my eye. I'm just gonna kind of fill in right here, this little V. Next I'm taking this Laura Mercier, finally using these, um, oh my goodness, caviar stick eye color and metallic taupe. I'm gonna run that in the waterline and also just put it in the corner of my eyes. I know it seems like it doesn't go with this, but I was playing with this the other day and I just ran this along my lash line on the top and the bottom. Again, I don't run it all the way across. I just run it maybe till halfway and then kind of do the same shape as I would if I was putting a winged liner, just heavier on the exterior here. But I think it warms it up really nicely. Again, very subtle, <laughs> but really pretty. So I think that's that like little unexpected pop of color. So the next couple steps are gonna tell me if I'm really on track in terms of this eye makeup, because right now, again, it doesn't look like it's gonna be amazing, but it's the mascara and tight lining. Surratt eyelash curler. I had to go get my um, primer that I just picked up again. So yay, I have this back in my life, the Dior, Dior Show Maximizer 3D, love it. Um, I also have my By Terry mascara, the one that I love. And then I'm still trying to use this one up. It's the It Cosmetics No Tug. It's just a black eyeliner. Let's go ahead and just tight line really quick. So I'm twisting it first. This kind of packs the color on there, the mascara on there. Huge difference. Let's get the bottom lashes really quick. I've extended it. I'll probably come back and do another coat. Really all we have left is cheeks and lips. Let's go in with lips. That's gonna help me with the cheeks part. I'm sure it's not a surprise, especially since it's holiday, that I'm going to pick something red <laughs> um, and my favorite red, 103 Legend. You've seen this before, but I really wanted to use this shade and I noticed when I tried this out earlier with a darker eye, it was just, it looked too heavy. Let's just go in with this. I'm going to tap this on because I don't want it to be too perfect looking either. I want it to be just like a, like a faded kind of exterior or faded uh, line on my lips. So I think more of a padding motion helps me with that. And I'm kind of pulling it inwards. Let's see how it settles in. Sometimes I go back and fix this as well. Let's go ahead with something a little bit lighter. We'll go in with the Luster Blush. It's this NARS Holiday Palette. Uh, Ray Morris Kabuki. This is the Mini Kabuki Brush. So I think I have a lot going already with the lip and the eyes, so I just wanted to keep the cheeks a little bit more subtle. And I am taking it again on these areas because it that peach color corrects as well. So it kind of camouflages, if it's not perfect yet, my concealer. And I will take it on my forehead as well. Now one thing that I do, just because I feel like I could use a little bit, just a little bit more definition, is I will contour my nose just right down the center. So I know I don't do that on camera all the time, but I thought I could show you how I do that. So I'm gonna take a highlighter, really any highlighter. I guess I'll use this one. I'm trying to use these, this is beautiful. This face one by Charlotte Tilbury. Um, in her, this palette, the Gorgeous Glowing Beauty palette. And I like to just take a, this is a Sonia G brush, pencil brush, down, okay, it helps if it's in the middle. So I like to take that down the middle of my nose. I've got a Burberry face contour. This is not very, it's, this is old, but it still works. So I just kind of dot along the side. Get one that's a cool color, and then I just kind of work it into that highlighter so it's going in like this. And that's it. So if you need just a little bit of dimension, that is how I do it. 
That way it doesn't look just like nostrils. I think I'm just going to add a little bit of highlighter, just a little bit. So I have another Kabuki brush, Ray Moore, so I'm just going to add a little bit of highlighter with the same highlighter from the Charlotte Tilbury palette. And then, I think this is dry enough, I'm going to blend my eyes in just a little. Back uh, to the Victoria Beckham palette, Caramel, this eight brush. I'm just gonna sweep it back and forth, just to make sure we're all good to go here. Yeah, this is definitely for someone who uh, struggles with this grease area. And if you are my coloring, this Caramel is the perfect crease color. Back with this amazing brush, the number 6.5. Okay, just one more pass with this powder. And then one more pass with this powder. Gosh, these copper ones, I just, they're so pretty. I decided to put my hair in kind of like a messy bun because I, again, I feel like when things are too perfect that at least with me, if my hair is perfect too, then um, it looks a little severe. So that's why, again, the edges of the lipstick, I didn't want perfect and even the skin, I didn't want that too perfect. Actually, the less concealer I put, the more natural my skin looks, even though my spots, I mean, they look pretty good but they're not perfect. And I think that's okay. Plus it's dark at night, so it's okay. <laughs> um, but I really like that sparkly aspect of the eyes because in the evening you have twinkling lights, you have candle light. So something that'll catch the light and just be a little bit more special without being glittery. So if you don't like glitter and I don't love glitter, so uh, we are on the same page there. This has like micro glitter, but it's interspersed. So it's more of like a foil finish with just a little teeny tiny little glitter. I don't even know if I would call them glitter, but compared to the rest of the shadow, the Shantikai uh, eyeshadows have just like little hints of teeny tiny little glitter. I think the mistake that I've made before with evening makeup is I feel like I've got to go heavy with foundation and eyes and lips and contour and highlight and then I don't look like myself anymore. I feel like I'm wearing a mask instead of just myself, but a little bit more sparkly. I would be very comfortable wearing this in an evening event because I wanna feel like myself in a social situation and not feel like I'm wearing a mask. So I'm really curious to see what Angela's come up with. I'm sure it's beautiful as always, um, but make sure you go see her video as well if you haven't come from there. And thank you for joining us if you came from Angela's channel. So if you replicate this look and you post it on Instagram, please tag me. I'd love to see your interpretation of it and kind of how you used some of the ideas or colors and um, how yours turned out because I, I always love to see what evening looks look like because I think that's the thing I need the most inspiration for just because I don't use this makeup this way this often. So yeah, I'd love to see what you come up with. So if you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks. I just want to do one more pass with the Guernlaw powder.